Hey, y'all need a break. Listen to these stories from r slash entitled people. Sister tries to have me arrested so she can go party, then tries to break in and steal our stuff. We come from a big New York Italian family. My older sister and I are total polar opposites. She was boisterous, very well endowed from a young age, very popular, very full of herself and self-obsessed. Never finishes anything. Never finished school, can't hold a job, etc. I was very small, thin, tomboyish, uncoordinated, clumsy, very shy, bookworm. I did not have many friends and usually was wandering alone somewhere or reading. I've had a job since I was 13. Long story but all ties in as it's only within a few days of it all happening. We are both adults and are both married. My sister has a son, and I am pregnant with my first child. After giving birth, we move back to the city my family lives in. My older sister is having marital issues and is getting ready to leave her husband. My husband and I had a decent-sized house that we were renting from my uncle. A friend of ours from college was staying in one of the rooms. After a discussion, we decided to invite my sister and her son, who was almost five, to move in with us as a live-in nanny. We let her know that she would not have to pay any rent or utilities, and that she would need to watch my daughter whenever we needed for work. She readily agreed. My husband and I worked opposite shifts, so this was perfect for us. We moved her in right away. We had her sign a paper agreeing to the whole thing, nothing technically legal but just something we can refer to later if needed. Things went south pretty quickly. I will be paraphrasing as this was a long time ago and exact wording won't be possible, but pretty spot on. Firstly, let me note that my older sister had gained a substantial amount of weight, which made certain areas of her upper torso much larger than before, like double G large. We get up one morning to make coffee. Our roommate is already up. My sister comes out wearing nothing but a very baggy tank top and underwear that were much too small. Things were hanging out everywhere. My husband spit his coffee out, our roommate walked in and immediately walked back out. I told my sister to go put some clothes. She huffed, put her hands on her hips and loudly yelled, this is my house too, I'll dress how I want. I told her to take some pride in herself and go put some damn clothes on. She stomped off like a little kid, dressed and came back out. My husband asked me loudly, on purpose so my sister would hear, this isn't going to be a problem with her going forward, is it? I looked dead at her face and said, it better not be. Right. She looked at me, rolled her eyes and said, fine but that just means these idiots, pointing at my husband and roommate, don't know what they are missing. Still full of herself. Fantastic. This has only been about two weeks since moving her in. The next day, our roommate came to us and said that he believed my sister may have taken money from his room. He stated that he had left a small amount of cash on his nightstand and it was gone now. His door was always closed, but it was open when he came home. My sister, unfortunately, has stolen cash from me many times when we were kids growing up, so I knew it was probably her. I went to confront her about it, knowing full well she took it. Again, she immediately started off by yelling as loud as she could, I did not steal anyone's money. You always blame me for this and you never have any proof. Her son came running around the corner with a fistful of dollars and a big smile, is this the money mama? The money you said we could go get McDonald's with. I stared at her and then at my nephew. She walked over to him, took the money from him and told me, this is my money, I already had this before I moved in. The one thing she hadn't noticed was mixed in with the US dollars, were some Mexican pesos. Our roommate's family lived in Tucson, Arizona. His father was a professor at U of A and was of Mexican descent. They would often go south of the border to visit as they had a very large extended family. I quickly snatched the money from my sister's hands. I examined the money and when I pulled out the pesos, I again stared at her. I said, and just what did you think you were going to do with these? She slammed her fist on the wall and told me to go F off, in Italian, and stomped off and slammed her door. My nephew stood there, almost in tears. He was scared and upset. He and I had a wonderful relationship, so I sat him down and told him that everything was okay and not to worry. I would bring him to McDonald's and get him the bestest happy meal ever. This brightened him up and he went skipping off. The next day we started our work week. I gave my sister our schedules. I went over everything with her. As my daughter had been premature, there was a little bit of extra care involved. She was a few months old now, but she was very small and had a severe lactose allergy. My sister then mentioned that a friend of hers wanted her to go out and party the next night. I told her that she knew she had to watch the baby, she knew several weeks ahead of time what my schedule was and had agreed to it. She said, I never get to go anywhere and now that I'm free of that man, I want to go party. Can't you have that guy who lives here watch her? I said, that guy is our friend. He is not in town and it is not his job to watch our daughter. It's your job, you agreed to live here rent free to watch her whenever we needed. She rolled her eyes and stated, this is ridiculous, it's one damn night. 
Can't you figure something else out? I told, if you would like to pay for a babysitter to come over, then fine, but if not then you will do as you agreed. She said, fine. Everything went fine the first night, came home, baby asleep, sister and nephew asleep. Note on the fridge from hubby stating all seemed good. I go to bed. I am woken up about three hours later to hear several children screaming and laughing. I get up go out to the living room to see I have a house full of children and some of my sister's friends, including the one friend that wanted her to party sitting on the couch and chairs. I immediately say, what in the hell is going on? My sister and her friends look up. One of the friends says, uh oh party police. I grab my sister's arm and pull her to the kitchen. What in the F is going on here? I am trying to sleep. She replies, since I cannot leave, I invited my friends over to have some fun. I'm really irritated at this point. Your friends need to leave, immediately. You did not ask if you could bring all these people here and it is a work day slash night for us. Have some effing respect. And you know my daughter cannot have a bunch of people around her, she's still too vulnerable. My sister waves her hand and replies, oh give it a goddamn rest. She's in her crib, no one is near her. And I need my friends, I need to socialize. I haven't been able to have fun in years. I insisted again that her friends leave, now. I reminded my sister that no matter what she thinks this is my house. She stomps off again and asks everyone to leave. I get up to go to work that evening. Everything seems to be fine. My nephew bounces in, happy as always, thrilled with his happy meal toy we got him the other day. My sister brushes past me, literally bumping my shoulder. I stare again at her. She mumbles something under her breath and heads to the kitchen. I walk in after her and she turns and stares at me. She slams a jar on the counter and immediately starts yelling at me, I didn't know I was going to have to watch your damn kid all the time. I want to go do my own thing. Shocked, I asked her at what point did she not understand that she would be alive and nanny to watch the baby whenever we were working. She said, that's not the damn point, I know what I said but I didn't think you were serious. I said, fine, we'll talk when I get home in the morning from work and figure out where we need to go from here. I got my things and left for work. Two hours later, I get a call at work from someone identifying themselves as a police officer. They are asking me to come home due to an incident at the house. I arrive about 30 minutes later to see three police cruisers, lights on, several officers milling around my home. My older sister standing next to an officer, talking and my roommate, who appears to have just come back from out of town talking to another officer. My husband also is now arriving home from school. A police staff sergeant walks up to me, asks my name. I let him know who I am. He asked me to follow him over to where my sister is. While following the office, I notice a few dozen yards away, the friend my sister wanted to go party with, parked in her car watching. The officer directs me to where my sister is, I wander over and immediately my sister starts yelling at me. How could you do that? How could you just leave her like that? What is wrong with you? I stand frozen, not understanding the situation yet. The office looks at me and asks where I have been. I tell him I was at work. The office asks if I make it a habit to leave my infant alone at home while working. It finally dawns on me what is going on. I tell the officer, absolutely not. Never. My sister here was hired to be our live-in nanny and was to be watching her tonight. She watched her last night as well. She has the schedule in detail, and we have discussed everything at length. My sister immediately shouts, that's a lie. I had no idea you were going to work. I was leaving with my friend to go out for the night when I heard the baby cry. I had no idea you left her here. I figured you guys had gone out for the night. Our roommate and my husband join us. My roommate says he came home to find my sister on the phone with the police saying that I had abandoned the baby. And my sister's friend was in the house telling her to hurry so they wouldn't miss the drink specials at a local bar. My husband goes in the house with an officer, shows him our work schedule on the fridge, my sister's room and the baby's crib in her room. He then shows him the paper we had her sign with all the agreed to info. Another officer goes over to the car parked down the street and tells the friend to come over. The office starts to question the friend about the phone call, my sister immediately starts yelling, she has nothing to do with this, she was here to pick me up when we both heard the baby crying. I tell the officer that this is par for the course with my sister. She made all this up. My sister again starts screaming at the top of her lungs, this is all a lie. I don't know what she's telling you but it's a lie. I had no idea the baby was here alone. And starts to fake cry. And just as things seem ridiculous enough, my nephew is brought out crying and telling the officer holding him. But mommy said it was okay to leave the baby, that auntie would be home soon and we were going to go out. I started to laugh. I almost bent over laughing as my sister reached for her son saying he doesn't know what he's saying. My nephew said, mommy don't lie, you said we were going to go play. That was awesome. The look on her face and the officer's faces was priceless. 
My sister had fabricated this ridiculous story and called the police, also she didn't have to work and could go out drinking. The crib was in her room. The work schedule and the signed paper, plus. Out of the mouths of babes, my nephew telling his mommy not to lie in front of a half dozen police officers. I was pissed but I was laughing. The officers were pissed now too, realizing the situation. I told the officers I wanted my sister off my property. She was not on the lease. They escorted her in the house, had her pack up the few belongings that she came with, which wasn't much. Just clothes, hygiene stuff, and a few personal knickknacks. I walked up to my sister with the signed agreement, tore it in half and handed it to her. I told her that she was never welcome back and I wanted nothing to do with her ever again. She could go with her friend. She was escorted off the lawn. I told the officers I didn't want to press any charges. She had no money and nowhere to go other than her friend, that was more than enough. The police eventually leave. My husband, roommate and I go sit in the living room staring at each other. We have no words. We just sit for a while. The next day, husband is off at work. Roommate is sleeping in. I take baby to go to a doctor appointment and the grocery store, then to stop at my dad's place for a brief visit. I left a note on the fridge letting my roommate know where I was. Just as I arrive at my dad's, he jogs down the driveway and says, better go home, your roommate called. It takes me about 15 minutes to get home, and standing in front of the door is my sister, screaming at the top of her lungs with two police officers on either side her. I drive up and get out of my car. My sister immediately tries to rush at me screaming obscenities in Italian at me. We didn't learn much Italian growing up but we can cuss like truckers in it. The officers stop her. My roommate comes around from the backyard, having come out of the back door instead of the front where my sister was. I ask, what the hell is going on? Neighbors are now coming out to see what's happening. My roommate called the police because my sister tried to kick in the door. Said that we had all of her electronic equipment in there and that this was her house and we illegally removed her. When he wouldn't let her in, she began kicking and pounding on the door and screaming at the top of her lungs. My husband had a very nice stereo set up with a multi-disc CD player, speakers, subwoofers, tuner, several dozen CDs, etc. We had a new large TV with several video game consoles. VHS players and a bookshelf full of movies and video games. My sister was attempting to break into the house and steal all of it. My sister was unhinged at this point. She was so incensed that spit was flying from her mouth when she was screaming. How dare you do this to me? These are all my things you stole everything from me. You are a liar and a thief turning the police on me. I will get you for this, I'm going to have you evicted. I'm calling dad. He will have his brother kick you out, you'll be on the street ha. Huh? On. The. Street. UBX. The police ask us if she's on the lease. We tell them no and give them the report from last night. He looks at the report, nods and says, oh. This is that place. Yeah we heard about this. Is this the same lady that called in the false report last night? I tell him yes, same person. The officer asks if I would like to trespass her. I told him absolutely. He turns to her, while his partner takes out some papers and starts writing. He gives her the spiel regarding the trespass order. The officer looks at me and I walk over and quietly say, see that car parked two houses down. Yes, that one. Can you issue the driver a trespass order too? That is the other person from last night. The officer walks over to the car. They tell my sister if they have one more incident with her, she will be under arrest. She stomps off down the street to her friend's car, literally screaming at the top of her lungs every obscenity you can imagine in English and Italian. We thank the officers and they take off. I talk to my neighbors and apologize for the trouble. Most of my neighbors are elderly and very understanding. A retired Navy officer next door says that he will be happy to keep an eye on the house for us when we aren't home. I thank him profusely. He pats his truck and says, your sister is a nut. I agreed. I head back over to my dad's place to visit and go over the last two days events. While baby is inside sleeping, my dad and I go to his garage to do some work on a project car of his. Being the only kid of his who knows how to work on cars, this is our thing. We bust a few knuckles, have a couple drinks, and shoot the shot for a while. A couple hours later, we hear a car screech to a stop in front of his house. He has a very long dirt driveway so the car was still on pavement. Out jumps my sister. Red-faced and fuming mad. She immediately starts stomping down the driveway. Fists balled up. My dad and I are sitting on the edge of the car near the engine, hood up, staring at her. She starts screaming, did she tell you she kicked me and your grandson out on the street? Did she tell you she lied to the police about abandoning her daughter? Did she tell you she called the police on me when I tried to get things she stole from me? I am the victim here, not her. I want her evicted from uncle's house. I want you to call him now and kick her out. She has no right to do this to me, no right to be there. My dad looks down at me, I shrug. 
She stops about 30 feet in front of us. She literally starts jumping up and down, I want her kicked out now. 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 Seeing a 25-year-old woman jumping up and down screaming like a 2-year-old was quite the sight. My dad looks at her. My dad can look at you and make your bones freeze, the look of death. My sister immediately stops. He says, no. That was it. Just no. Turns around and starts working on the car again. I smirked at my sister. Enraged she starts screaming obscenities at me again. My dad slowly turns around, takes two steps toward her and in a deep, loud, reverberating voice says, Basta. Kinda means enough. You will not behave in this manner. You will not talk to your sister until you can be civil. Go away now. You do not disobey my dad, ever. My sister, still red-faced, turns around and walks off to the car, gets in. Her friend revs the engine of her very old, beat-up sedan, screams F you both and takes off. My dad turns around, says, well, how about some pizza? Takes another drink and goes back to working on the engine. I haven't spoken to my sister since. My daughter is now 27. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments.